Good morning, everybody. How is everyone doing this morning? Welcome to World Worship Revival Center, coming live to you from God's Country, Wasaga Beach. Just want to welcome everybody. Welcome, church family. It's so good to be here with you this morning. I'm praying that the Lord will touch you this morning, that the Lord will speak to you this morning. And um, I'm just going to share a word that I believe that uh, is going to bless you. Um, just a few things that the Lord has been speaking to me through this week. Um, and we're just so thankful for each and every one of you, church family. We love you guys. We're praying for you guys. And we're just so thankful for what God is going to do in our hearts and in our lives as a church, as a body, as a family. And I really believe that the unity of Christ needs to be stronger and stronger every single day. Amen. And um, I just want to start off this morning praying and thanking the Lord for this day. How many of you are thankful for this day? How many of you say thank you, Jesus, for this day? Thank you, Jesus, that we are alive. Thank you, Jesus, that you have a purpose for my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you have a purpose for my family and that that will and that purpose will be fulfilled. Amen. And um, it's been it's been a difficult uh, couple of weeks for us as a church, as a church family. But we know that we will come out greater and we will come out stronger. And um, we are just praying and interceding and just contending and believing for breakthrough. Amen. It's, it's good to hear that there's been breakthroughs already and that uh, things are turning around. And what the enemy meant for evil, he will turn for good. Amen. How many of you agree with that? Well, let's pray this morning and uh, we'll get into the word. Father. I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you, Father, that this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in this day. Father, I just pray for healing right now for your people, Lord. I speak the breath of God, your breath, Father, over their bodies, Father, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. And Father, I declare healing now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, there's no distance in you, Father. You are everywhere, Father. And Lord, I thank you that your healing touch, your healing power, comes upon your people, comes upon your body right now, Father. From the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, I declare complete healing. I declare complete restoration, Father. And the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, Father, is alive, Father, in their hearts and in their lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your life. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Amen. Well, welcome again, everybody, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this a few weeks from now or a few months from now. We're just so thankful that you are here and we are here to pray for you. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know where you're watching us from. And if you have any prayer requests, please leave them down in our comments. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to come into agreement with you for whatever needs you have. And um, again, as a body, it is so important that we that we unite together and that we come up, we come together as as in one in one as as one body, amen. Because it's so important with everything that has, is is going on right now. And um, you know, I felt the Lord this week when I was asking the Lord to speak to me as we were praying with Debbie. I you know I, I felt the Lord saying, you know, we need to seek you need to seek me like never before. And um, you know, one of the things that uh, that we need to do is, you know, we need to set our minds on the things that are above. How many of you agree with that? Don't set your mind on what you're seeing, on what your circumstances are, on what's surrounding you, because the reality is, is that the great, the kingdom of God and his, his um, thoughts and his, um, his things are eternal. Amen. So let's go to the word this morning. Let's open your Bibles to Colossians chapter three. I want to start there. And it says, uh, set your mind on the things above and not on the things of this earth. And I'll read from the uh, Amplified Version because it, it makes it a little bit better and easier to understand and it just makes more sense. It says, set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above. Notice how it says to keep focused. You know, it's so easy today to lose our focus because there's so many things that come our way. There's so many things that are thrown at us and so many different things. 
that the enemy wants to take our focus away from Jesus and he needs to be our focus. We need to be looking at him. He is the author and he is the finisher of our faith. You know, we cannot look back. We cannot look down. We cannot look at what we're seeing um, visit. Physically, we need to see things in the spirit. And he's saying this morning, look at me, look at things the way that I see them. Focus on me. And notice how it says habitually. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say just on Sundays. It doesn't say just on Fridays or whatever day you gather together as a church. It says habitually. And habitually means every day. You need to make a habit of it. And as we know, it takes a while for habits to happen, to, for habits to form. It takes 21 days. But the, 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 the hardest step is to take that first step. Once you've taken that first step, you continue on it. And it goes on to say, and not on the things that are on the earth, which have a temporal value. The things that are above have an eternal value. Amen. The things on earth have a temporal value. And we're just so thankful because God has the value that is the most important value. Amen. And as we were talking, you know, as we were talking with, um, with Debbie this week, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that she was mentioning to me is that, you know, we need to learn to, you know, push through our circumstances. We need to give thanks in the good times, we need to give thanks in the not so good times and we need to give thanks even in that time of waiting, even in that time that you're going through something, but you don't understand, but you don't know. You know, we need to learn to push through it. We need to learn to go through it and not just get stuck and not just, you know, focus on, on what's going on and what's happening, but focus on Jesus. Because when you focus on Jesus, everything changes. Your perspective changes, your thoughts changes, your mindset changes, and that's what God wants. That's why I was saying a few weeks back when I was sharing is that the Lord wants us to keep renewing our mind continually. We need to renew our mind daily, not once a week, not twice a week, every day, because it's so important that we focus on Him, that we look at things the way that He sees them, not the way that we see them. When we see things the way that He does, Everything is different. Everything is cha- Everything changes. You have a different perspective. You have a different outlook. And things are so different. You know, and, and I'm reminded of that phrase. It says, have the attitude of gratitude. You know, we need to be so thankful to God because He has done so much for us. He's given us so many things. And, you know, even though it's sometimes not easy, you know, but it's so important that you always give thanks to God. You know, it's, it needs to be continual praise. And, and praise is something that we need to do on a daily basis. You know, it's something that you can do at home. It's something that you can do in your car. You know, when you're alone, just put worship music on. Just put praise music on. And just let that, you know, continually soak in your spirit. Let that continually feed your spirit. Because we need to strengthen ourselves. We need to strengthen our spirit. Because the reality is, is that there's so many things out there that want to knock us down, that want to take our focus away from Jesus, but we need to look at him and focus on him. And, you know, we've said this before, your attitude will determine your altitude and we need to have the right attitude. We need to have the right heart. And I remember uh, years ago, uh, pastor wrote this song and, you know, speaking of going through difficult times and and the song goes something like this. And it says, you know, it's easy to praise you when everything is going well. It's not difficult to bless you when you give your blessing. But when the time of trial comes, you know, um, and, and the time of testing comes, you know, you're, you're tested. When you pass through the fire, when you pass through the test, that's when you're tested. And the song goes on to say, that's when I need to worship you more. That's when I need to praise you more. You know, teach me to love you. Teach me to praise you. You know, teach me to trust in you. And it's in those moments, you know, where we need to praise God, where we need to to thank God, because it's so difficult, you know, when you're going through something and you just don't understand why God is doing it. What's the purpose in it? Why is God doing this? Why is God allowing this? You know, but we need to have that heart of gratitude, that thankfulness, that gratitude in our hearts and say, Lord Jesus, I don't understand but you are here, but you are here and you're the reason, you know, we need to worship him. He's looking for worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. And we need to worship him daily. We need to worship him continuously. You know, let that, let those songs birth out of you. Let that, let that new song come out of you. 
because he's, he's, he wants you to praise him. He wants you to worship him. And he just wants you to soak yourself in his presence because that's what's going to change you. That's what's going to transform you. Breakthrough will come when you worship him, when you thank him. You know, instead of complaining, instead of saying, God, why? Lord, I don't understand. Why is this happening? I don't know what's going on. You know, that's when we need to worship him and that's when we need to praise him. And, you know, many years ago, um, I believe it was around 2019, you know, I was going through um, a difficult moment in my life. And um, I remember I was going through a lot of fear. All of a sudden, I started getting a lot of fear. All of a sudden, I started getting like um, anxiety. And I'm like, Lord, where is this coming from? Right. And there was, you know, sometimes series of events that happened in your life and, and so forth. And I remember that I would tell Debbie all the time. I'm like, you know, pray for me. Pray for me. I feel bad. Pray for me. I feel like I'm going to die. Pray for me. Please pray for me. And she would pray for me. But I remember that it got to a point where this just started becoming like a habit. It just started becoming all the time. And, you know, one day she had to like really give me a good shake and said, you know what? You, I can pray for you, but you need to learn to shake this off. You need to learn to not submit to this. And you need to learn to not to come into agreement with this. You are well, you are good. This is all in your head. You've got nothing. So stop. And sometimes you need that, you know, in your life. Sometimes you need someone to shake you and, you know, and just kind of like, whoa. And I think that, you know, it, although it wasn't easy, I started strengthening myself and I started taking authority and it took a while. It didn't happen right away because, you know, you would feel things and you would sense things. And it's like, you know, why am I feeling this? Why do, why do I feel like this? Why does my body feel this way? And, you know, automatically you would start to like, you know, go through this motion in your mind and you're like, okay, but this is what I'm feeling. I, I must have this or I must have that and I must have this. And I remember, you know, it's like you need someone to say enough. And, and I'm so thankful for Debbie because that's what she did. She said, you know what? Enough. You need to stop and know that you are healed. And you need to trust God and you need to get into God's presence and not allow the enemy to speak to you and not allow to, and don't allow yourself to listen to the enemy's voice. Because how many of you know that is so tormenting when you allow the enemy to speak to you and you just feed that, feed the enemy instead of taking authority, instead of taking those thoughts captive. Because we get thoughts all the time bombarded at us every single day, every single day. And like I've said before, they're not good thoughts, you know, but I just want to declare that, you know, uh, you know, I, I had to, I had to know that that was the truth. You know, what is the truth? Jesus is the truth. And Jesus wants the best for you. Jesus wants the best for me. And D Jesus says that we are healed. And the word says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And I just declare freedom right now over your life. I speak freedom over your house. I speak freedom over your family. I speak freedom over your bodies. I speak freedom over your finances. I speak freedom over every area of your life in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for your people, and I thank you for what you're doing this day, Father. I speak wholeness over you in the name of Jesus, over your family in the name of Jesus. You know, one of the things that we need to learn to do is we need to uh, magnify Jesus and not our problems or our circumstances. And many times we can get caught up in that, you know, magnification or, you know, making something bigger and it really is, instead of focusing on Jesus. Jesus has to be our focus. We cannot dwell on what's happened to us. We cannot dwell on what's going on. And, you know, that year that I, that I went through that, you know, it was, it was a year of, you know, where, I, where we saw provision from God, where we didn't expect, you know, it's like suddenly, you know, God just started aligning things and putting things in order and getting things lined up. And it's like, you know, at the beginning, I'm like, God, what's going on? Where is this coming from? Like, what, what are you doing here? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. And, you know, one of the things that Jesus was telling me is, you know, I'm greater and I'm bigger than your circumstances. I'm greater and I'm bigger than your problems. Focus on me. Set your eyes on me. Look towards me. Look at me. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. And don't allow yourself to get detoured. Don't allow yourself to get sidetracked from what I want to do, from what I want to accomplish in your life, from what I want to accomplish in your heart, because Jesus is the focus. He is our focal point. And one of the things that the Lord was speaking to me the other night was, I need you to abide, abide in me. 
We need to learn to abide in Him. And what does it mean to abide in Him? It means to remain in Him, to remain in His presence. No matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, we need to remain in His presence. You know, we had like... We, we know the story of the virgins and the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. And the wise virgins had their lamps full of oil. You know, how is your lamp today? How is your oil today? Is it empty? Is it half full? Is it half empty? Is it fully full and overflowing? I think we all need to work in that area. And I think that we all need to, you know, have the oil and have that oil overflowing. You know, the presence of God presence of God in us, the presence of God through us, manifesting through us. And, uh, you know, we need to learn, seek, we need to learn to seek his presence. And as I was saying before, you know, as Debbie, as Debbie was saying, seek the Lord in the good times, in the bad times, in the tough times, in the desert, in the oasis, you know, we need to learn to seek him and we need to learn to push through and to push forth. And to not allow the enemy to hold us back. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to hold you back from the purpose and the destiny and the calling that God has for you. And yes, you do have a destiny, you do have a calling, and you do have a purpose in God. No matter what you think, no matter what has been said, no matter what has been spoken, you have a purpose, you have a destiny, and you have a calling. And that will be fulfilled. And we cannot lose sight of him. How many of you are receiving something this morning? I hope you are. Please write it down in the comments if God is speaking to you, because that's that's so important. You know, we need to we need to learn to we need to move forward. Like I said, don't move, don't don't hold yourself back. Don't allow the enemy to stop you because that's what he wants to do. You know, you are an, you are a threat to the enemy when you know your position, when you know who you are in him, because he cannot, he cannot move you. He cannot shake you. When you know your identity, when you know who you are in him, when you know that you're a son, when you know that you're a daughter and you know that you're not an orphan and you know that you're not a slave, that is power because the enemy sees you as a threat to him when you know who you are. So don't allow yourself to, you know, believe things that the enemy is telling you that are not true because you are a blessing. You are a gift from God. You are his son. You are his daughter. And in you, he is well pleased. You are his beloved son. You are his beloved daughter. And he loves you. He's never prepared a single defeat for you, nor will he. Because he wants the best for you. He wants the best for me. He wants the best for us. And he wants us to take ownership of that. He wants us to, to know that. And he wants us to rest in that. And he wants us to grow in that. And he wants us to move forward in that. And we need to turn our ear. We need to learn to hear God's voice. And we need to tune our ear and ask him and to speak to us. And he will speak to us. You know, it, it can be in different ways. Like I said last time, God speaks in different ways. He'll give you an impression. He'll give you a picture. He'll speak in your mind. He'll speak in, in many different ways. He'll speak through the word. He'll speak through, um, you know, he'll speak through people. He'll speak through prophets. He's, he'll speak through your children. You know, whatever it takes for you and I to understand what he wants to tell us, he will use whatever he needs and he will do it. Amen. And we need to learn to be sensitive to God's voice. You know, for me, the way that I know that God is speaking to me is I just you know, I can, I can sense it in my head. I can, I know that it, it's a voice that I, that I know that it's God. You know, I know when God is speaking to me and yeah, I, I know when the enemy is not speaking, when the enemy is speaking to me and, uh, you know, we need to be dependent on him. We need to depend on him first. We need to depend only on him and not on anything else. And, um, you know, we need to, to, you know, we need to be still, we need to be quiet and we need to focus. Because he wants to speak to us. He wants to tell us. He wants to be, you know, he wants to be our number one. You know, the Bible says in, in, um, in Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added on to you. You know, we need to seek his kingdom first. And that's one of the things that, you know, we, we need to, to really understand and we need to really get a hold of. Seek him first. Seek his kingdom. Because that's what's going to give us everything else that we need. You know, many times we seek other things. Many times we seek, you know, everything else. And then we remember God. Oh, yes, that's right. God. Yes. No, we need to seek God first. And that's something that God was telling me. You need to seek me above all things. He needs to be number one. He needs to be the one 
that is going to be touching our hearts. He needs to be the one who is our daddy, who is our Abba, who is our father. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants to have fellowship with me. And he wants to be our hope. He wants to be our living hope. And he wants us to be thankful with him. He wants us to give him praise. He wants us to give him glory. And he wants our whole heart. Not a bit of our heart, not half of our heart, but he wants our whole heart. And God needs to be first. And that's that's uh, that's so important. And so let's go to that, that word in the book of Matthew. Um, Matthew chapter 6. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you for your word, Father. And let's go to verse 25 this morning. We'll start at verse 25. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, Therefore, I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted. And it's so easy, like I said before, to be distracted because other things catch our attention. About your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow seed, nor reap the harvest, nor gather the crops into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. You know, the, the, the Lord wants us to depend completely and fully on Him. He is our source. He is the one that will provide. He is your provider. He is your everything. Are you not worth more than they? You know, sometimes, how many of you ever felt worthless? How many of you ever felt that you're not worthy? And we are, we are, we are, are um, worth more than those animals. So, you know, that should tell us something right there. And who of you, by worrying, can add one hour to the length of his life? You know, so many times, so much times we spend worrying, you know, instead of being uh, a warrior. We need to, we need to stop worrying and trusting in him more. And this is something that, you know, I think we all still need to work on because we need to learn, to, we need to grow in that. We need to grow in, in trusting him more and, and being fully convinced and fully, you know, 100% knowing that everything will be okay, that everything is going to work out, that everything is going to be fine. He's done it in the past and he'll do it again. And sometimes we forget of those victories that we've had in the past. And sometimes we forget of those breakthroughs that we've had in the past. And we think that what we're going through now is like the worst thing. But it's like, listen, we need to remember that we went through things in the past and he got us out of those things. How many of you are thankful and can attest that he has gotten you out of different situations in the past? Amen. We all have. But when we go through a problem, when we go through a situation, you know, we just begin to worry. And we need to focus on Him and we need to trust in Him and not worry and allow Him to take over. You know, let Him take over and rest in Him. Rest in Jesus. That is so hard sometimes to do, you know, because we want to be in control. We want to help God. We want to be that fourth person of the Holy Spirit. And there's only three. So, you know, while, while yes, God needs you to do something sometimes, you know, you can't help God do certain things. You know, you need to learn to rest in Him and know that He is the one that's going to do it for you. Amen? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and the wildflowers of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of much faith? It doesn't say that, right? It says you of little faith. And I think that that's something that we need to grow as well. We need to grow in faith. We need to, you know, we need to learn to grow in that area of our lives where we have 
our, our faith grows and grows and grows and grows. You know, we all have faith. We all have different measures of faith. We're all at different levels in our faith, but we're all growing in our faith. Amen. And, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, pastor has mentioned this before, you know, sometimes our faith, our, our problem is not a money problem. It's a faith problem. You know, our problems is not, you know, anything else. It's a faith problem, you know, and we need to learn to grow in faith. We need to learn to, you know, remember those things that we've gone through in the past and say, listen, yes, I went through that and I grew from it and I'm growing through that. You need to remember those things and not remember, you know, and focus on the things that you're going through right now. Remember where God took you from. Remember where God brought you to and know that he is taking you to an even better place. Amen. It says, for the pagan gentles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. And then here's the one that, we, that I focused on before. It says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being the right and being right, the attitude and character of God. Wow, that is so powerful. I'm going to read that verse again. It says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. That is so important. You know, he's, notice how it says, most importantly. Most importantly means it is the most important thing. And sometimes we don't look at it as the most important thing. You know, because we think that we can, we think that we're self-sufficient. We think that we think that we can do things on our own, you know, but we need to seek him first. That's what he wants. That's what I felt the Lord is saying, saying to me right now. You need to, you can't be self-sufficient. You need to, you can't be independent. You need to seek me for everything. I am your everything and I am the one that will supply everything, but you need to seek me. Don't seek your, your job. Don't seek anything else. Seek me because I am your everything, you know, and his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Sometimes we want to do things our way and not his way. And he will allow you to do the things your way until you say, Lord, I surrender. And that's what he's wanting us to do. He's wanting us to surrender our way of thinking. He's wanting to, us to surrender our thoughts. He's wanting us to surrender the way that we think, the way that we, you know, the way that we talk. And he wants us to surrender fully and completely to him. The attitude and character of God. And I think that that's where we're all growing. We're all growing in character. You know, how many of you are growing in character? You know, it's not easy sometimes, but we are all in different levels of growth but we're all growing, right? We're not at the same level that we were before. At least we shouldn't be at the same level that we were before. You know, we need to strive to be better. We need to strive to get better and to grow and to mature because God wants more from us. God is demanding more from us. You know, in these times, we need to really be strong. We need to be strengthened in our spirit, in our soul, in our mind. And, you know, God wants to take us from glory to glory. He wants to take us to higher levels, but you know, that's going to depend on us, whether we want to or not. And he's going to respect that. If you don't want to, you're going to stay at the same level. How many of you have seen people, you know, in the past and you've run into them again and they're at the same level that they were five years ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, there's been no growth, you know, and I believe that God wants us to grow continually in everything that we do. You know, having the right attitude is so important. You know, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation is, we need to have the right attitude. And that's so difficult sometimes. You know, I always um, tell my kids, you know, you need to have the right attitude. And, you know, even myself, I need to have the right attitude. Because how many of you know that sometimes we don't have the right attitude? You know, and it's so easy to, to have the wrong attitude. And then it says, and all these things will be given to you. So do not worry, verse 34, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You know, don't worry. I just, I just feel that the Lord is removing um, a weight off of some of you right now. He's lifting off 
a burdens off of you right now and he's removing you know like it's almost like you have a backpack on and it's like full of weights on it that's what i literally see the lord i see you right now um i don't know who that is but i just see like the lord is taking off that weight he's removing that weight and he's saying you know surrender that burden to me surrender those problems to me surrender that situation to me because i'm in control and i'm here for you and i will take that away from you you know his burden is light Come, and the word says, come to me, all you who are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And the Lord wants to give you rest this morning. He wants, to, he wants you to rest in him. He wants you to know that he loves you, that he cares for you, and that he has everything in his hands. And his will and his purpose are perfect and they're excellent. So I just declare, um, um, I just declare that off of you right now. Just, you know, even if, it, if you feel that that's you, just prophetically, just remove that backpack, just remove that bag, just remove that bag from you and just say no more. I don't want it. I don't need it because that has kept you down, that has oppressed you, that has depressed you, and that has taken your focus from what Jesus wants to do in your heart, from what Jesus wants to do in your life. So, Father, I just break off, Lord, every spirit of heaviness, Father, every, um, every yoke, that is not from you, Father. I just break it off your people in the name of Jesus. And Father, I declare that they are free, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father. I declare, Father, that they are whole. I declare that they are healed. And Father, I just thank you because you're healing somebody's mind right now, Father. You're healing somebody's uh, thoughts. You're healing somebody's eyes, Father. And you're healing somebody's ears, Father. Thank you that you're just popping somebody's ear right now. And Father, thank you that you're giving somebody a new sight, a new focus, a new insight, Father, that when they open up your word, that when they read your word, they will they will uh, get downloads like never before. They will begin to see things like you see them, and the, the, the scriptures will open up, Father. And I thank you for what you're doing in your people right now, Father. Thank you that you are making them stronger. Thank you that you are making them um, mighty in you, Father. And thank you that, you know, what they've gone through does not compare to what you have for them, Father. Thank you that you are splitting their seas, Father. You're splitting the sea for them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you are making your making a way for your people where there is no way, Father. Lord, I thank you that the the, the barrenness, the dryness, the uh, the the staleness. The stagnancy is coming to an end, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for rivers, Father, of living waters that are starting to flow in your people, that are starting to stir up in your people, Father, right now. I declare that they are um, more than conquerors, Father, and I declare that they are free, Father. I declare that they are free, Father. I thank you that they have the mind of Christ. I thank you that they're the head and not the tail. I thank you that they're first and not last. I thank you that they're above and not below. And Father, I thank you that they walk by faith and not by sight, Father, that they focus on you, Father, the author and the finisher of their faith. And Lord, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your people. We just bless you this morning. We love you this morning. And I just want to thank the Lord for each and every one of you for your lives. And um, if you have any prayer requests, please let us know. Um, reach out to us. We're here for you. We're here to pray for you. And um, we just want to tell you that we love you and that um, breakthrough is here. Amen. How many of you can say breakthrough is here? I receive my breakthrough. I take ownership of that breakthrough. And that breakthrough is mine. Amen. We thank you. We love you so much. That's what I felt the Lord um, wanted me to share this morning. I hope that this word has been a blessing. If it has, please share this broadcast. Please share this message um, on Facebook with your friends um, and help us spread the word. Amen. Because this is about him, not about us. We're just his vessels. But just spread God's word. If you have friends that don't have Facebook, we do have a YouTube channel WWRC Collingwood. We've got a, a lot of messages on there, past messages that will bless you. And uh, this message will go up there as well. So we just want to bless each and every one of you. Have an awesome week. Have a great week. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have any, any uh, petitions, prayer requests, any testimonies, please let us know testimonies because testimonies are so important. Testimonies strengthen us encourage us and give us the strength to keep believing. 
to keep moving forward. Amen. Even if it's even if that testimony for you is something small, it'll be huge for somebody else. It's going to be important for somebody else to hear and to listen. Amen. Because God is on the move. God is moving. God is doing great and mighty things. How many of you are thankful for this day? How many of you are thankful for your life? I just bless you again. Have an awesome week. Have a great week. Bless you. And we'll see you all next week. Blessings.